Well, you know all the prophetic events that are supposed to happen with Judea and Samaria in the last days. There's an article that was posted today, January 6th, 2022, by Israel Hayam from JNS. And this was really interesting. Um, Israeli Deputy Economy Minister Yair Golan came under fire Thursday for referring to the residents of Hamesh in Samaria as subhuman, despicable, and a disgrace. Those are pretty strong words. He said, these people keep resettling a place that has been legally evicted. They shouldn't be there, said Golan in a Knesset Channel interview. Let's not even mention the fact that the people who live there riot in the nearby Palestinian village of Burqa, demolish headstones and stage pogroms, continued the former IDF deputy chief of staff. We, the Jewish people, who have been tormented by pogroms throughout history, do the same to others? These are not people. They are subhuman, despicable people, a disgrace to the Jewish people. They should receive no government backing. We should forcibly remove them from the area and restore law and order, he added. Golan's remarks drew immediate backlash from politicians on both sides of the aisle, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett called Golan's remarks appalling. Yair Golan's remarks about the settlers in Homesh are appalling, a generalization, and border on a blood libel. The settlers in Judea and Samaria are today's pioneers, he tweeted. Opposition leader Benjamin Netanyahu of the Likud party went further, calling on Bennett to fire Golan. The settlers in Judea and Samaria are not subhumans, but rather pioneering Zionists who settle our ancestral land, said Netanyahu. After this shameful statement taken directly from Nazi terminology against Jewish people, Bennett must fire Yair Golan. Interior Minister Ayelet Shaked called Golan's remarks disgraceful, adding that he can keep talking. These wonderful pioneers will continue to settle the land. Culture and Sports Minister Yahiel Troper said he was ashamed as a fellow coalition member by Golan's statements. The settlers in Hamash are not subhuman, but rather Israeli citizens who hold different views with which he profoundly disagrees. Sinking to this level of discourse won't advance dialogue. It will only tear us apart from the inside, said Troper. Gush Etzion Regional Council Head Shlomo Naaman said, It looks like the deputy minister, who is well versed in history, has become hysterical. His hysteria stems from the success of the communities in Judea and Samaria. He should remember the dark times when the terms coming out of his mouth were directed against the Jewish people. We will continue to succeed in working towards pioneering in the land of Israel. And this article first appeared in Israel Hayom, posted from JNS. So Yair Golan was the Israeli Deputy Economy Minister. And, you know, to say that they ought to be physically removed is exactly what they did to the Jewish people in Gush Katif that had the greenhouses which were consequently destroyed and all the crops that they grew and um, they had their business shipping beautiful vegetables to Europe and all of that came crashing down to an end and they even the uh, Arabs were allowed to work for the greenhouses so they came in there and hauled the Jewish people out of there like animals and it was just a despicable scene I don't think these people ever fully recovered some of them didn't have homes anymore because they were flattened to the ground so let's just pray for Judea and Samaria and let's just pray that God restores the biblical land to the people that he wants to have it, that he promised it to. And, you know, people need to realize that this land was given by God to the Jewish people and they are going 
they're not opposing the Jewish people per se, they're opposing God and what he promised them. Um, to say such despicable things about his own people is completely puzzling, you know. To call people subhumans and despicable and, you know, granted I don't believe that the people living there should be harming other people or anything like that, but I don't believe anybody should be hauled off like animals out of a place. Um, if this went on anywhere else in the world, there would be outrage. So it's crazy to me that it keeps going on. So anyway, we know um, the Bible prophecy that says, let all who are in Judea flee. <laughs> Do not go back into your house. Do not get your cloak. Um, supposed to flee to the mountains and that's prophecy you know that is coming so I just think that this is all like a precursor leading up to the hatred and the kind of rhetoric that's being spewed out by people and you know God's gonna come against it because his his goal is to restore his people to the land that he promised them in a covenant and you know the Temple Mount was purchased by King David you know and he was of the house a lineage of David <laughs> he was the royalty of Israel so he purchased the threshing floor of Arana the Jebusite so you know people that are not believing the Bible are not seeing how God is fulfilling his will and drawing his people back to what he promised them but he's drawing all people back to the place where the Garden of Eden was and these kind of statements just kind of divide they don't unite and we just pray that God would open the eyes of his people to see that he is their Messiah, he's their Yeshua, he's their salvation, and that he's going to be revealed and we will see him as he is, and those who have this hope in them, as I said in my last video, purify themselves as he is pure. So it's not by your own righteousness that you gain salvation, it's through his works and through his redemption process and through the covenant that he made with his bride during the Passover Seder and sealed it in his own blood is the bride's price and he's I believe taking one bride Leah and the that was the Gentiles that were unloved and then Rachel's the one that he really wanted he's coming after this at the end of the seven year time of Jacob's trouble Jacob had to wait seven years to get Rachel and I believe Israel's Rachel represented so the seven year tribulation the time of Jacob's trouble is you know the amount of time that Messiah um, is going to be coming at the end of the seven year time to get his bride Rachel he's already taking a bride the church out of the Gentiles of the nations which includes Jewish people that already accept him and believe in him and have accepted his covenant of eternal life um, but in the seven years the Messiah is going to come and he's going to deal with his people Israel which represents Rachel so it's really interesting you know and that is called the time of Jacob's trouble so Jacob had to wait seven years to get the bride that he really wanted at first and he finally got her that's how it's gonna happen and he's gonna reveal his face to them eventually and they will see and weep because they did not believe God and that God came to save and gave them salvation and he's the same one who's always saved them 
through the centuries, you know. Of course, he guided them into the promised land because he was starting to lead them all back. And then eventually, you know, the Messiah's testimony would go completely out to the world. Century after century, it would get wider and wider until the whole world heard the good news. And then everyone would be drawn back to the holy city, to Jerusalem, the place where God has chosen for himself, where his name is written forever, and where he will rule and reign forever. And that day is soon approaching. So, the king is coming. Are you ready? Have you given your heart and life to him? I hope so. I'll talk to you later. Have a good night.